once again to Chair Interval Training, brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and Yellow Springs Senior Center. And of course, me, Lynn Hardman, Flex and Silver Sneakers, a certified instructor, but as always, you don't need silver sneakers to enjoy this exercise program. All you need is your body and your brain and a great attitude and perhaps a sturdy chair. So, a couple reminders before we get started with the 60 minute exercise program. You'll want a safe space to work in, so make sure there's nothing on the floor that you might slip, trip, or fall on. It's recommended that you wear sturdy, flexible shoes. Um, your balance may be enhanced by working out in bare feet if you have a safe surface but i'm a strong advocate for appropriate footwear and if you have diabetes type 1 or type 2 you must wear good protective shoes while exercising and before you begin this or any exercise program consult your doctor and go at your own pace if you feel dizzy or out of breath or your balance is a little wobbly it's recommended that you return or remain seated for the entirety of the program you'll get plenty of exercise benefit whether you're moving in your chair or on your feet and every time you move your body you're also doing a lot of great brain exercise and mental health is important so i'm going to turn on a little music to motivate us. And I'm going to get started standing up, but you can remain in your chair for the entirety. Let's see if that's a good volume. Okay. Let's see how it feels to move here behind my chair. I recommend that you use your chair as your balance check. So if you're behind it and just marching, you'll always be able to keep it within your peripheral visual field. And when you can see it, you can touch it in a moment's notice. So just march it out and let's focus on good posture. Just standing or sitting tall elongates your torso. And this makes more room for your lungs to do their job. It also helps your body to move better when your spine is elongated. It also exudes an air of confidence and when you look confident and you feel confident, it's really good for your whole attitude. The mind and the body are very strongly connected. Well, let's work on some breathing because nothing's so easy that we should take it for granted. Inhale as you breathe in ideally through your nose and just breathe at your own pace. Breathe in like you're smelling your favorite aroma and breathe out gently as if you're blowing through a tiny straw. Good. All right. I'm going to march here over to the right side of the chair so that I can keep it in my left hip pocket in my hands reach. We're just going to continue to warm up a little bit more. Taking that right foot forward and back, forward and back, or a rock step, which we're going to use later on. Every time we meet here digitally, we're going to work on the ABCs. A for agility, B for balance, C for coordination, and S for strength. Now, coordination. If you can, if you don't need the chair for your balance check, see if you can swing those arms to that cross crawl or oppositional movement. It may seem simple, but 
it really does help to better connect the right and left hemispheres of our brain for better coordination, better movement, better cognition. All right. Let's see if we can slow this down. And leave that right foot in front. Just tapping that heel. Try to balance while you're tapping that heel. Got your chair if you need it. And just settle it lightly on the ground. Elongate the spine, breathe in. And hinge gently forward at the hip. Not too far. I like to say keep your chin up. Figuratively as well as literally. Ah, good. Limbering up those wrists and ankles, if you can see. Lowering our fingers and toes, and then lifting. Good. Let's see if we can balance here. Pull the crown of the head up. And see if you can circle with the wrist and the ankle. Got your chair if you need it. You can also put your foot down. Reverse that circle direction. I did tell you we work on balance. Let's take that right foot marching forward and back again. Forward and back. Forward and back. Good. We're getting a nice warm up. If you're in your chair, you'll have to scoot over to the edge to do this forward and back marching, but you can do it. Yeah. Let's slow it down a bit. Forward and back again. Forward and just leave your foot back. Pressing the heel to the ground. Lean forward for a gentle cast stretch. Reach up on a strong long diagonal and lift and lower. Pull up to the ball of the foot and then pace that heel on the ground and leave it there. Lean forward. Good. Pull up to the ball of the foot. Tuck your tailbone under. Open your chest. Close your chest. Open. Limbering up the spine. If you don't need that hand on the chair for balance, take that movement to both arms. Good. Woo. Let's see if we can try that little bit of dynamic warm up over here on the left side. Make sure your area is safe. You've got the chair in your right hip pocket. Best posture. And let's take that left foot forward and back. Forward and back. Good. Swinging both arms in that oppositional fashion if you can. Always got your chair where you can see it and use it. I like to call the chair our assistive device. There's no shame in using an assistive device. The only shame is when you need it and you don't use it. Good, let's slow this down. Forward and back and just leave it forward and tap your heel on the ground very lightly. Balancing, knowing you have your assistive device. Chin up, back long and strong, inching at the hip, just a bit, keep your chins up, fingers and toes too, and then down, and up, down, up, good, let's see if we can balance here, floating that left foot in the air, and circle at the ankle and the wrist while balancing. One direction, we've got our chair, we need it. And then the other. We could always put our foot down as well for our balance check. Take that foot forward and back again. Keep that blood circulating, those muscles warming up. Good. Let's slow it down, just forward and back. Forward, and let's leave that left foot back. Pasting the heel on the ground. Leaning forward. I hope you're following along at home as best you can. Remember, if anything hurts, 
hurts, don't do it. You can always go back to the last movement that felt good to you. Paste that left heel on the ground. Or just skip it. Good. Pull up through the ball of the foot. Shoulders over hips. Tuck your tailbone under. And then open your chest. Curling your spine like a mad cat. Wow. And then opening it. Exhale as we close. In the as we open. All right. Let's continue to warm up just a little bit more in the chair here. Before you get seated, I want to stress, as you take your time and mindfully get seated, you want the heels of your feet very close to the chair. In this manner, as you squat, slowly sitting down, you're strengthening your hips and your legs. But if your knee or your hip gives out, you're safe in your seat. We don't want anyone to get hurt while doing this or any exercise program. So, in our chair, if we sit near the front edge, it allows us to move with greater range of motion. And I want to just work those legs out a little bit with those knees and the toes pointing the same direction and gently get an adductor or inner thigh stretch. Guiding the knees out and then rolling one shoulder forward. Good, and then the other. Ooh. Walk those feet together. And let's stretch through the side. And the other side. Good, how are you feeling? We're going to use the perceived exertion scale from 1 to 10, with 1 being the lowest intensity and okay, good to go, and 10 being the highest maximal intensity. I can't even speak or take another step. And our ideal range for our activities today will be a 4 to a 7. If you feel 8 or 9, slow your pace or return or remain seated. Another way to gauge our intensity is the talk test. If you can't talk, you're doing too much. So slow it down a bit or reduce the range of motion or return to your chair. Now, we're going to do about 10 minutes of aerobic activity, which is for your heart predominantly. So take a break whenever you need. I'm going to try it here in my chair and see how it works. But if you know you would like to stand up, go ahead and, and get up to the right side of your chair so that your foot can move forward and back. Since I'm going to be working in my chair with this right leg, I'm going to come over here, sit as tall as I can, and march, march with the right foot. Forward, forward, together, forward, together. Good, now to the side, side, together, side. This works in the chair, side. You gotta pull your belly button in and be strong. Now, back, together, back, together. In fact, there might be a lot of abdominal involvement here. To the side, four, to the bed. Together, good, together. Forward, just one, and now to the side, one, and now to the back, one, and now to the side, do it again, front, side, back, side, do it again. This is at tempo, but we're going to try a little bit faster when we get to the front. Are you ready? Let's go, forward, side, back, side, forward, side, Back, side, you got it. Side, woo, it's hard in the chair. So if you're in the chair, just marching out here, you might notice that you get sore or tired here on the hip flexors and the quadriceps. If that happens, 
You can just sort of take a break and substitute another movement, like drawing your heels back, or stretching your legs out, or moving your arms and not even your legs, or your legs and not your arms. Tons of choices. You get to pick. All right, I'm going to dig my heels in and stand up. If you're already standing, stay there. I'm going to join you on the right side. Now let's go to the left. We just did the right. I know. Check your area. Check your posture. Check your intensity. And stand or sit tall. Let's get this left foot up marching. Excellent. Can you touch your chair? You need it safely where you can see it and use it when you need it. Let's rock step forward for four, three, two, one. Now side, four, three. Use those arms if you like. Now back for four, three, two, Good. Side. Four. Three. Two. Good. Now front for one and side. One and back. One and side. One. Again at tempo. One each way. And you know what? We'll get to the front a little bit faster. Forward. Side. Back. Side. Forward. Side, pump those arms if you like. Forward, side, back, side. Woo. Are you breathing? I hope so. It's mandatory that breathing. One more time. When we get to the front, let's just march it out. Woo. Good. Nice deep breath. How are you doing on that perceived exertion skill? One being, shucks, I could do it all day. Ten being, oh, I'm done. Say it out loud and you'll be passing the talk test. All right, we're going to roll this pattern one more time, but before we go to the other side, let's walk a virtual tightrope. Reach out, make sure you can touch your chair. Put an imaginary book on your head. And pretend you're going to take just, let's say, three or four steps. Heel to toe on a tightrope. You don't have to look down. Do keep your hand right next to your chair. And over there. We can get that right foot marching again. This time we're going to do everything in fours. When we get to that quicker tempo, we're going to do four in each direction. Okay? You'll see. Good. Marching. You can see and touch your chair. Rock step forward. Four. Three. Two. One. To the side. Four. Three. Good. Two. One. Back now. Rock and together. Rock together. You got it. Put a little spring in your step to the side. Four, three, two. You ready to go faster? Ha ha. Four, three, two. Side. Four, three, two. Back. Pump those arms if you can. Side. Out. Back. Out. Again, let's go. Four to the front. Four to the side. Four, three, two, breathe. Four to the back. Woo. And four to the side. March it out. Woo! How you doing? Breathing. Good. Talking. Yes. One to ten. Maybe close to a seven. Good. Let's try that tightrope one more time. Catch our breath, check our posture before we return to our seat. 
I'd like to start about an arm length away so I can see and touch the chair. I go slow, because when I move slowly and mindfully, I'm working more on my balance. And when I get to where I can't touch my assistive device, I'm done. We're going to transition to an interval of strength now. And if we come to the front of our chairs, if you're not already there, slowly, mindfully, getting those heels right next to the front legs, we're in perfect position to safely squat. Why do we do squats? I sound like a broken record, and I know. But they are the number one strength exercise that you can do with your body weight to strengthen your hips and your thighs. And research shows that the more the more, but if you can continue squatting with ease and walking, these are very highly correlated with your independent living. I've been sitting on that. <laughs> Woo! I have not offered you a drink of water yet. Shame on me. Make sure you are mindful when you get your water, hold that navel in like you're zipping up tight trousers and support with your arm as you step to the side and lean to the side. Ooh, I want to check my music too. Excellent. Got a little lost there. Here's to your health. Physical health and emotional health. Mental health. Ah, we're going to do a set of strength work. We're going to use our band. If you don't have a rubber band or, or one of these like um, latex or latex free uh, tubes or bands, give me a call or go online if you can and order something. Now that stores are reopening, most stores will have them. But I still have a few kits that you can borrow for free, my favorite price. Anyway, take your tubing. We are going to do some hip abduction. Sitting at the edge of your seat so that you can move your legs. Take your tube or your band, and, and it's a good idea to make sure the bottoms of your shoes aren't harboring any little sharp rocks because you're going to step on it with about an equal length of tube on either side. Sit tall near the edge of your seat so that you can step out without moving your torso to either side. If that was super easy and you want it to be more challenging, crisscross your two handles so that you've got an X on the front of your shins. Sit tall. Now step out to the right. See how that feels? And out to the left. Pretty good. Well, let's try it twice to the right. Keep your navel pulling in and keep your spine pulling up. Twice to the left. Now let's try it four times to the right. Out in slow. Out in slow. Out in slow. Now the left, out. Keep your body straight and tall. Best breathing would be exhale on that exertion. Now let's try eight each side. Ready? So exhale, seven, six, five. Can you four count with me? Three, two, one. That should be getting hard towards the end of the set. Four more. Four. Three. Two. One. Good. Let's keep our feet about hip width. And we're going to roll to the outside edge of the shoe and open the knees like the pages of a book. 
good. Now, if this is too hard for you, you can go back to uncrossing. But most of us have a lot of strength and power in our hips. This external rotation of the hips is a very good strengthener of the rotator cuff. Just like around your shoulder, you have a group of muscles that are protecting and um, moving your hips. Let's focus on the outside part of that range of motion and just pulse. Inhale like you're smelling your favorite flowers. Exhale like you're blowing through an imaginary straw. Good, I feel that deep in my hips. We're going to do an upper body exercise. So bring your hands to the middle of your knees. You might have to widen your stance there. Pull up to your tallest version of your spine. And bring the handles close to your abdomen. We're going to do an upright row. Stopping no higher than our collarbone. Your thumbs might be able to touch your shoulders. And then touch your, your navel. Keep your hands very close to your body as you do this upright row. It will protect your shoulder. Now we're strengthening the shoulder uh, rotator cuff. As we inhale at the top, draw your elbows back like you're yawning. And if you want, you can progress this exercise by walking your feet forward, keeping the heels pasted down. That adds more length and resistance to the band. Or you can lean back in your chair. And now we've really got a long way to row. Do your best. Good. Inhale up. And exhale down. And let's finish with a little pulse at the top. I'm going to sit up and squeeze a lemon between your shoulder blades. As you inhale, smelling your favorite soup this stuff. And exhale as if you're blowing on the broth. Ooh, I felt that. Let's transition to one more exercise, sitting right at the edge of your seat with your feet ahead of your knees. Feet stay on the floor, pull your navel in, and we're just going to tuck our tailbone under like a sad puppy dog, and lean back, don't let your heels pop off the floor. Maybe you could tap your shoulder blades on the chair back and then slide forward. Good. Ooh, this is tricky. So I'm just holding on to the handles here, kind of like, I almost feel like a, what do you call that, a water skier. If you wanted to progress this or make it harder, you can hold the handles with one hand and take the other one, ooh, that was hard, cross it over your chest. That makes it a little harder. Or cradle your ear. Ooh, that makes it a little harder. You could add a little rotation to one knee. You're not going to necessarily touch it. But if you do that rotation to one knee, there's nothing that says you have to even it out, but you can try it here. Put the hand folded over the chest, straight up and down. Pull that navel in. This is an abdominal slide or curl. You can make it even harder with that hand cupping that ear or drawing the knee up towards the elbow. Ooh, this is hard. Do your best and then get to rest. Maybe you're already there. <laughs> oh, I am. Good job. Make sure the tension is off of your tube before you step off. And replace it on your chair or somewhere. We are going to use that again. But it's a great time to replenish our, ourselves with another sip of water. I've told you before, but Water is so important to our body's function, but our, but our brain's function as well. Our cognition is better when we're well hydrated. So, we're going to transition again to another interval of 
cardiovascular or aerobic activity. Reminder, you can do the whole thing in your chair and you'll get benefits here. But if you want to stand, take your time and know that you can return to your chair anytime you want. I'm going to stand up for this pattern. Whoop. You know what? I'm going to first try it in the chair and make sure it works here. Those of you who want to stand up, go ahead and um, come on over here to the left side, if you would. Those of you who are staying seated, sit tall. If you're standing, stand tall and don't get too far away from your chair. We're going to try this pattern that sounds like this. It sounds like up, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, down, two, three, or slow, 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 quick, 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 up, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, down, two, three, knee lift, knee lift, knee lift, march, 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 got it? Whether you're seated or standing, stretch the crown of your head up. Notice we're balancing here, but we could be holding our chair if we need or tapping our toe down if we need a balance check. Slow, 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 quick, 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 slow, slow, slow. Got the pattern? Good. Now remember, remember when you're in the chair, if the tops of your legs start to feel tired, that's because they are, and you're right. So you might have to change the pattern or change the locomotor movement to draw your heels back. Let's see that works. Good. Or sticking your leg out. That works as well. You know what else works? If you want, you could always just rest. But continue on. I'm going to transition to standing. I just wanted to make sure it worked in the chair. Those of you who are over here, keep up with that pattern. I think it's a up, 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 down, two, three, up, 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 down, two, three. This is a good one for balance. That's why you got to be close to your chair. Good. We're just going to do a couple more because I know you've been standing a while, those of you who stood up to begin with. Good. March it out. Let's try it slightly different. This time, with some hamstring curls behind our chair. So take your time to get situated. Make sure you can touch it. I like to widen out my stance so I get more hip involvement and start with a little, a little dippity doo dah or a mini squat. We're gonna lift that right heel up, up, up. March, 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 up, 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 down, down, down. Got it? Pull your navel in and use that arm if you like. You can always use the other one to check your balance. Good. Up, 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 down, two, three. It also sounds like this. Slow, 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 quick, quick, quick. Slow, 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 quick. Good. Dorsiflex that foot and use those hamstrings. One more each side and then we're going to change it just a little bit if you like. We're going to do a little hip abduction. Keep the belly button pulling in. Lift the crown of the head up. This is a hip strengthener as well as a balance strengthener. Dorsiflex that foot. It should look and feel like a golf putter. All right, I feel this. I'm getting stronger. And I'm not sure how much longer I want to do this. You can stop whenever you like or finish this out. One more set each side. Here we go. Woo! March it out. Or stretch those hips. Stretch it to the right. Stretch it to the left. Do we want to do this one more time? Maybe over here on the right side? I think if you want to, you can continue in your seat or on your feet. I'm going to switch it up with a little heel dig. Three to the front. 
three, two, one, one, two, three, heel, 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 march, 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 or lift, 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 and try to balance, lift, lift. Let's add a little brain challenge to this. You could kick that leg too. If you like, this is going to be hard, but do your best. Think of things that come in threes. I don't know, like the three little pigs. Or the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Um, the three musketeers. Eek. Help me out. <laughs> the, well, that's kind of hard. A, B, C, that's cheating. One, two, three. Oh, I'm running out of things. One, two, three. Here, let's change it up. Up, 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 down, two, three. We need one more brain game. Come on, we can do this. Let's just go through our multiplication tables. Just the first three. I'll start with ones. That's easy. One, two, three. Now twos. Two, four, six. And get it now threes. Three, six, nine. Now fours. Four, eight, twelve, Ooh. five, ten, fifteen. Can we get to ten? Six, twelve, eighteen. Ooh, that was hard. Seven, fourteen, twenty-one. Woo! Eight, sixteen, twenty-four, nine, eighteen, twenty-seven. Yay! Ten, twenty. 30, woo! I did okay, how did you do? More numbers on a scale of one to 10. How do you feel with your exertion right now? Are you able to talk? I hope so. It's time to transition again. This time, strength. Starting out with yes, our favorite, squats. All right, now, if you've been doing these all along, you might be getting strong enough to, where you might want to progress this. How would you do that? Well, you could just cross your hands over your chest. And it kind of changes the balance a little bit. See how that feels. You could also hold here at your hip hinges a couple of fairly heavy weights, you'd be surprised at, or you can hold them right there, rack them up your shoulders. Just holding five pounds in each hand is going to add 10 more pounds to your squat. And we've been doing a lot of squats, haven't we? If you want to get seated, go ahead. Whew. But we need to add the challenge so that our body adapts. Let's get a sip of water, step to the side, lean to the side. Pull that navel in and support with your arm as well as your muscles. You don't have to continually increase the amount of weight to continue to get stronger. We'll have a physiological plateau and that's good. And over time, sometimes we have to take a break or we might um, have a little injury, musculoskeletal or an illness that causes us to, to uh, go back and lose a little strength. But then we can easily retrain wisely, gradually to regain. All right, we're gonna do another set of strength work. We're gonna use that tube again. This is a little bit of a different exercise. Grab the tube. Well, first let's turn slightly sideways. If you would, facing the left, just slightly, and then put that tube under your right foot and bring it to the inside of your knee. If it's over here, it's going to pull against your leg. So put it on the inside. Bring that, the tube in close to your body. And we're going to find a comfortable stance that allows us to hold it with both hands, 
pull the navel in and start to push up like you're taking a heavy bale of hay and floating it up here on the loft or a heavy box and putting it on the shelf. Now, if everything feels fine, you can extend a little further. If it's too hard, here's how you can regress. Just put one of those down and try it with just one, two. For highly advanced, if it's really, really want to challenge, you could, if you're safe, step into it. Sit down, stand up. This is a whole body exercise. Make sure you're close to your chair if you choose that option. And do your best. This is working the shoulder and the tricep of that of both arms, but at a different angle. It's also working the abdominals a lot. And if you stood up and worked your hips and your thighs a lot, that's a lot. We're going to do it the other way. Well, let's take a break first. Go ahead and just lay that on your lap. Grab your ball. If you don't have a ball, it's okay. We're going to work these obliques, but laterally. And we're going to also work the shoulder abductors, I meant adductors, the pulling together muscles. So tuck that ball under that right elbow, pull the navel in, pull the crown of the head up, and squeeze. That's strengthening your shoulders. If that doesn't feel good, you could just do a lateral tilt and skip the squeeze. Strengthening the obliques on the left side of the body. Make sure you breathe. It's counterproductive, maybe even dangerous to hold your breath while you're doing any strength exercise. Good. Let's see if we can squeeze on this side with a little pulse. Inhale like you're smelling a beautiful aroma and exhale as if you're blowing fluff off a dandelion. Good, let's switch it to the other side. Now if it hurts your shoulder or your arm on one side and not the other, there's no law that says you must do the left equal to the right. That's feeling good, let's add that lateral flexion. Hold the navel in. Squeeze as you exhale. I like to think of squeezing the air out of me and the ball. If you want to progress, you could lift that elbow. But most of what you get out of your exercise, particularly seated with the ball, is your form. The better your form is, and the more you're able to call up or recruit your abdominal muscles, the more you'll get out of it. So let's see if we can finish this off with a little pulse while we maintain that breathing. Inhale through the nose. Exhale at your own pace through your mouth. And we're going to finish this strength set. Tuck that ball away. Turning our body slightly to the right. Using our two, putting it under the left foot, skinniest part, and bringing the tubing to the inside of that left knee, and bringing the two handles close to our body. By keeping the load close to our shoulder, it, it strengthens our shoulder without any undue risk. So, pull the navel in and see how it feels to put that heavy box on the low shelf. That felt fine. Exhale is maybe you put it on the higher shelf. If that felt good, put it on the highest shelf. Exhale as you press. Rotate a little bit or follow. 
follow those handles with your eyes. That'll get more core involvement. And for those of you who really feel confident, if you like, you can stand up with it, tap down. That's a big exercise. And for those of you who needed to regress, remember you can put one handle down. And we are using both arms here. Finish off with your best two more, or just stop when you're ready. Whew, that was a great exercise. Release the tension on your tube before you step off so you don't snap yourself in the chin. Well, that was good. We did a, a couple of sets of strength, a couple of sets of 10 minute or so cardiovascular exercise. We're going to get a sip of water and sit for a stretch. <sighs> 10 minutes might not seem like a long time if you're accustomed to longer cardiovascular exercise. Or it may seem like a long time if you're not accustomed to it, but 10 minutes is kind of a magic minimal number for us to get some good aerobic conditioning. So we're going to sit near the edge of our chair here and just elongate the spine as we breathe in. Think of the crown of the head floating up to the sky. Stretch out that right leg. Use your left leg as a sturdy table. Another nice deep breath. Exhale, stretching your tailbone back. Keeping your chin up. Reaching forward, but this time let that arm float down and just relax. Lifting the toes up towards the ceiling or dorsal flexing them will develop this back of the leg stretch. You may feel it in the Achilles tendon or the back of the heel, the back of the calf, the back of the knee. And if you stretch your tailbone back, you should feel it gently at the back of the hip maybe too. Good. Sit tall. Hold the navel in as you lean back and draw the knee toward your chest. Stretching the hip and drawing little circles with your ankle, one direction and then the other. If it feels good, you can even draw your chin gently down toward your chest. Stretch the length of your spine. But sit tall and stretch out that left leg. Supporting your body on the right lap. Long, strong torso. You can always shorten and soothe your shoulder if your shoulder aches in that extended position. Keep your chin up. If we dip the level of our head below the level of our heart, it, it tends to make make folks dizzy. We don't need that. Lift the toes up. Breathe and reach the tailbone back. Sitting tall, hold the navel in. Draw the knee back. And circle that ankle. Other direction. And if it feels good, allow that chin to lower toward the chest. Breathe into the back of the neck. Mm, and sit tall. Let's get the fronts of these thighs and hips stretched out, turning to the side. I'm going to turn this down a teeny tiny bit. So you've got your left hip a little bit off of the front edge of the chair. 
and you can support your back as you hinge forward to ease that left leg back. Your toe can be relaxed and pointing backward or relaxed and tucked under. Whichever way works best for you, but don't move suddenly. You might get a little Charlie horse. Breathe in, lift your spine to its tallest. And if it feels good, to a little bit of an opening or arching your back. And stretching toward the chair. Letting that knee drift down. That's a good all body stretch. Ease out of that. Facing forward before we get the other side. Let's take a deep breath. Peeling those fingers back. Filling our lungs from the bottom to the top. And then exhale. Blow out all that stale air. Curling our spine. Ah, that felt good. Turning your body to the other side. And gently hinge forward to help coax that right leg back. Allow that knee to drift down, but lengthen here on the front of the hip. As you inhale, lifting your arm and your torso up. Again, if that hurts your shoulder, shorten and soothe that joint. Your body knows best. Gentle arch if it feels good. And exhale as you lean and stretch through that right side of your body. Oh, that cool down and the stretch is always a, a gift, almost a, that we give ourselves at the end when we're nice and warm. Now, another gift we can give ourselves is to be mindful. You can call it meditation. You can call it prayer. You can call it breathing. Whatever you call it, research shows that it's very, very good for our overall wellness to meditate or you can call it whatever you want. But the whole idea is to focus on something other than what's above your neck. So our minds are often racing and thinking of all kinds of things. We're going to sit back in our chair, and I need to move my ball, and try to focus on anything other than all the little things that are going on in your mind. A really simple way to do this is to just relax in a quiet space and practice being mindful of everything other than your mind. A good way to do it is to focus on your breath and notice what you notice. So ease into that, closing your eyes in your quiet, peaceful place. I hope you have access to a quiet, peaceful place.
circulatory system to every cell, to the tips of your fingers and toes. At times when you're breathing and trying to pay attention to your body, your mind interrupts. There's nothing wrong with this. Just as you would soothe your shoulder by shortening it, if it hurt by extending it, you soothe your mind. And come back with your focus to your breath. You may find it helpful to focus on different parts of your body. Mindfully notice what you feel perhaps in your toes. Are you able to spread them gently in your shoes? Bring your attention up, up your legs to your knees and your hips and let your in-breath draw energy and oxygen, soothing any discomfort you have there. And as you exhale, let go of any tension, tightness, pain. Practice this mindful breathing, mindful meditation, kind of a mindful cleansing of your brain. And it really can be quite good for you. It can help you to reduce stress. It can help manage chronic pain. It can help boost your immune system. It may help you with your sleep. May, the month of May, can you believe it's nearly over, is Mental Health Month. But, every month is a good month for mental health. And our mind and our body are so connected. Whatever we do that is healthy for our body, in turn, can help our mind be healthier. And when we take good care of our mind, it can help our body. But the human condition is one that is quite resilient, but fragile. So at times we need help, and help is out there. Um, just as your body may go through some hills and valleys with injuries or illnesses and take time to re-strengthen, so does your mind, and there are resources for you. So just to remind you, I think you could still get this list of mental health resources from the All Springs News online. But uh, there are local mental health resources. Uh, the Ohio Statewide Crisis Text Line, Text for Hope. Well, first you dial or text or you dial 741741 you don't really dial it anymore do you y'all punch it in <laughs> and then you type text for hope i tried this it worked and i assured the counselor who immediately texted me back that i just wanted to make sure i had it right so um and then we ended the call you can also call the mental health and recovery board of Greene County or Clark or Madison. Um, they have a crisis line and that number is in the All Springs News online, I hope still. And you can call NAMI, National Association for Mental Illness, or TCN. Um, we have TCN Behavioral Services is a wonderful resource and they uh, serve, they have a 
site in Xenia and in Fairborn and others that I'm not sure. There's also the Family Violence Prevention Center in Beaver Creek. Um, and I believe Xenia has a site as well, but you can check ysnews.com for all that. Um, and be well. Stay safe. Stay strong. And please, we must move for our best health. So until the next time we can get together, keep it safe and simple.